What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nurse Bass back with another video and in today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be do doing a little discussion on the different types of shock, primarily four different types that we're going to touch on here. We're going to get into a little bit of the patho and how our patients are going to present as a result. Let's get into it. Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast mode. So the first thing that we would actually need to discuss here is what is shock, right? Whenever we're talking about shock, whether it's cardiogenic shock or septic shock, what have you, shock essentially is a systemic low blood pressure, right? This is a systemically low blood pressure. We have systemic vasodilation, right? Vasodilation. What does that mean? Vaso meaning our vessels, dilation meaning that they dilate. Now, what is occurring in blood vessels that are dilated? You'll recall that in our blood vessels, in our arteries, which carry oxygenated blood away from our heart, we'll remember that there is some level of smooth muscle contraction necessary in order to propel blood forward, right? Just like while we're sitting here, I may be sitting here giving a little presentation and you might think I'm not using any muscles, I'm not working out, but there's some baseline skeletal rigidity that is necessary in order to keep my body upright, to keep my shoulders upright. There's some baseline level of contraction occurring within my skeletal muscle to keep my body upright. Same thing with our smooth muscle in our vessels. There's some level of contraction necessary to propel blood forward. The problem in shock is we have massive systemic dilation of these blood vessels and this is shock this results in low blood pressure and now we're going to dive into some of the different types of shock that you may see so the first type of shock that we're going to be discussing in this video here is cardiogenic that's the first type of shock that we're going to get into cardio may some of you may be picking up on it already cardio referencing that heart right we're going to recall within that heart we have two atria up top and down low, we have two ventricles. In cardiogenic shock, we're having a breakdown in our heart. There is a shock, a systemic vasodilation, a low blood pressure that is caused by our heart. Now, this could be in instances such as a myocardial infarction, an actual coronary vessel on that heart itself um, could actually get occluded and this could actually result in myocardial death, right? A portion of this heart can end up getting damaged permanently. If a portion of that left ventricle gets damaged, you can imagine that we're going to have a greatly reduced effective contraction of that left ventricle. How effective is a damaged muscle going to contract? It's going to be very weak, very flaccid, boggy, floppy, whatever synonym you'd like to use. As a result, we're not going to be contracting with full force, it's going to be very, very weak. And therefore, we're going to be putting out very little cardiac output. Our blood pressure is going to be tanking. We are going to be in a form of shock. So maybe I should have said I should specify that I misspoke in cardiogenic shock. We're not actually looking at dilation of the vessels. We're actually looking at a failure of that pump. Cardiogenic shock, shock, systemic low blood pressure as a result of this disrupted cardiac function. The second type of shock that we're going to be dealing with here, we're going to be looking at something called septic shock, okay? This is all too common uh, in the ICUs, in the CV ICUs, in the critical care environment where I work. Septic shock is essentially a type of shock, and in this instance, we are looking at massive vasodilation of those blood vessels. This is a type of shock that's going to result from a bacterial infection, right? So what we're actually looking at here in these types of instances, let's imagine we have these little bacteria that get into the blood vessels. All different types of ways that we could get bacteria into our blood vessels, right? A wound that gets infected, a, a dental decay, some kind of issue within the mouth that ends up getting infected, a source, a potential source to allow bacteria into our bloodstreams. Pneumonia, pneumonia, an actual infection in the pulmonary process, an infection in the lungs that can end up letting bacteria into our bloodstream, 
causing septic shock. So ultimately what is occurring is we are having a bacterial infection, right? Bacterial infection in our blood. And it's this infection that ends up resulting in massive vasodilation of these vessels, okay? Whenever we have massive dilation of these vessels, we have low blood pressure. Our vessels are now super, uh, super expanded. Like we said, we need some level of resistance of contraction of that smooth muscle in order to propel blood forward. If we don't have that, then what ends up occurring is we have massive dilation of the vessels. This ends up resulting in low blood pressure. The third type of shock that we're going to discuss here is called hypovolemic shock. Hypo meaning less than, right? And volemic referring to our volume. What do we have in hypovolemic shock? We have less volume. So in cardiogenic shock, we have a pump failure resulting in systemically low blood pressure. In septic shock, we have a bacterial infection in our blood resulting in systemic vasodilation leading to low blood pressure, right? Leading to shock. In hypovolemic shock, what we have is an actual depletion of our intravascular volume, right? So within our vessels, we have our little red blood cells, right? Um, and all of these red blood cells are being carried along by plasma, right? So we have plasma, proteins, all different types, potassium, sodium, all of these different things floating throughout our blood vessels. In instances of hypovolemia, we actually have a depletion in all of this intravascular volume. This could be in instances such as a hemorrhagic shock, right? Let's say um, we have hemorrhage, um, <clears throat> a bleed, okay? I can't spell hemorrhage off the top of my head, right? We have a bleed. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. You're putting me on the spot. We have a bleed. We have a hemorrhagic shock. Patient's been in a motor vehicle accident. Maybe they've lost an extremity. Maybe there's been some sort of blunt trauma. There is a bleed within the body. We are losing volume from within that vessel leading to systemic low blood pressure, right? You're losing intravascular volume. You're losing gas in the tank. We're losing blood pressure, hypovolemia. Also, not necessarily just a bleed either. You know, you could actually see something such as dehydration, right? Patients, people out there, you know, roofers working in 100 degree weather, not taking an adequate oral intake, becoming completely dehydrated, losing all of their intravascular volume through perspiration, ending up passing out, losing uh, water, losing intravascular volume, blood pressure drops. This is hypovolemic shock. And the fourth and final type of shock that we're going to discuss here is actually anaphylactic shock. This is the type of shock where a patient or an individual is actually exposed to some sort of allergen, some sort of insect bite, something that they are allergic to. And it's this actual exposure that ends up resulting in a cascade of hypersensitivity reactions that leads to systemic vasodilation that leads to a low blood pressure. So guys, I know that, that was kind of a quick down and dirty on the different types of shock, those four different types of shock that you're most likely to encounter on tests. And I know that we didn't really dive into all of the different treatment modalities, you know, all the different signs and symptoms that a patient may experience whenever they're in shock. But hopefully this little dose of patho is gonna help you, you know, better wrap your mind around what shock is, what the different types of shock are and what's occurring pathophysiologically in these patients experiencing these different types of shock. Share this with a friend if you found it helpful. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm putting out content every week to motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. It's your boy Brad, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.